Captain Markov. What do you mean you want reparations for the damages? It was just an old satellite. Why would you care about it so much to put our home world on the line? The Emperor and the Volcan Empire looked up at the female Terran, a burning scowl on her face as it felt the entire fury of humanity was behind her eyes. The Emperor couldn't help but sweat heavily, as he found his collar a little tighter. Emperor Velisky, the Empress of the Terran Union has given me access to 15 aircraft carriers, 10 warships of the Emperor class, as well as 15 battleships, and 122 cruisers of the heavy and light class. Do you have no understanding of how important that satellite was to the expansion of mankind's knowledge of the universe? It is the satellite that allowed us to make contact with the Karkin Collective additionally. But it was only one satellite and it wasn't even a modern one. It was built by one of your now long gone nations in what you call the 1970s. There is absolutely zero importance to that satellite anymore. Why are you asking so much for its loss? He couldn't understand her anger. Why would anyone care about such an old piece of equipment? The only remotely valuable thing it carried was the gold disc, but humanity was such a vast empire, they had no need to covet such a paltry amount of gold. You know our demands, Emperor. If you do not send the reparations we requested of 400,000 galactic credits, we will flatten this planet and the one that destroyed the satellite. Do you understand? Beleski sighed. Of course, ma'am. We will do our best, but why so much money for one satellite, ma'am? I would understand if it was 10,000, but 400,000 feels a little much. The time that satellite was in space, as well as the historical significance to Earth itself, she replied bluntly, not letting the Emperor look away. But wait, it's important to Earth, not the Empire, ma'am? He gulped as he spoke, feeling his heart sink. Yes, that satellite is important to humanity, not the Empire of Terran. So get to it, Emperor. The screen went blank as she collapsed back into her chair. What's the time, Chekhov? she asked, while digging into an interior breast pocket. After a moment, she pulled out a lighter and a pack of cigarettes before removing one from the box, flicking open the lighter and bringing the bright orange flame to the tip of the cigarette. Eleven, 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 Captain, on the dot. She laughed slightly. Okay, we give them till twelve before flattening this planet if they do not respond by then, obviously. Um, not to be rude, Captain, but don't you think flattening two planets over one satellite is a bit much? The Volcan have been good allies so far. I don't think one mistake is an adequate reason to obliterate them. Chekhov, do you not even know what satellite the Vulcan destroyed is? She leaned back in her chair, pulling her jacket forwards and suddenly straightening it out. Um, no, Captain. We don't get told the details of royal orders. Chekhov turned in his seat to look at the Captain. For a moment, she looked out over the deck of the carrier, Ark Royal, one of the Empire's lead ships. Total crop capacity of 3,000 aircraft, and she was stuck here on a Sunday evening when she wanted to be home watching TV and drinking some bourbon. Let's just say it does not matter, Chekhov. Just know it was a vessel from the first space race, so pretty historical. Either we will get this finished quickly and cleany, or spend half an hour flattening a few cities to make a point. It might be the Volcom, but right now our job is to consider them as no more than possible enemies. Do you understand, Chekhov? Or do you need to be restricted to your room? The no, ma'am. I will do my job professionally, he said, and quickly turned back to his station. With a sigh, Markov sat forward in her seat slightly. We're taking a drag on the cigarette, looking out over the information on the many screens in front of her. Captain, there is a Vulcan ship inbound requesting docking. They are saying they have the funds we requested, but are refusing to respond to our hails. Markov shot up from her seat and marched towards the centre of the front of the bridge. Rotate the ship till we can see the ship. I want eyes on that vessel. Aye, aye, ma'am. The helmsman gently pulled his controls, and the ship rotated to the right, thrusters down the length of the bow and stern. Blue jets of fire shot into space from the right side of the deck. The ship came to rest, slightly tilted to the right, with enough of the Volcan vessel visible for them to inspect it. Looking over the ship, Markov couldn't help but feel that something was slightly off, even though it looked like a normal transport. Four rotating thruster mounts, a square body with no windows, a single camera in the front, allowing the AI to see its surroundings. But then it struck her. The normal red glow the eye had was not there. Markov turned sadly, looking at a woman out of the corner of her eye. Makel, what is the ship's speed? Is it accelerating or decelerating? It's getting close, so it should be slowing down. Um, no, Captain. The ship is currently doing 100 knots and is 100 chains away. The vessel is still accelerating. Makel responded quickly, having kept an eye on the vessel the entire time. Ratios instantly! 
Markov blurted out, spinning around in the balls of her feet. Instantly, the weaponry officer sent out a call to the shore control room, and within seconds, the black shimmering shields of the Terran carrier came to life, encompassing the ship seconds before the ship struck the shallow bow of the Ark Royal. The black shields of the Terran warship burst into life, stuttering and shimmering as it burst with bolts of lightning shooting through it, deep within the ship, the black matter reactor roaring to life, groaning as it kept up its form, pulsing most of its energy towards the bow. The Vulcan ship exploded a few seconds later, encompassing the bow of the ship in a ball of fire. The flight deck that hung over the bow was reaped with flame and blackened by soot before the plume dissipated, leaving the wreckage floating away at tremendous speed. They could see several pieces bounce off the other vessels accompanying them, damaging some of the smaller vessels. Get that fucking man on comms! I want his head on my table by tonight! Captain Markov marched back to her seat while taking a drag from the cigarette. She collapsed into her chair and crossed her legs as the screen came to life. What the fuck do you think you are doing, Velisky? You do know this is a possible act of war if we do not get an explanation? Out of the corner of her eye, she watched as the panel on the other side of one of the destroyers opened. A small craft was ejected into space, floating away for a few seconds before it shot towards the planet's surface. Fuck you, Terran! You and your empire have been our allies for generations, and the shoot-down of a single fucking obsolete satellite deems us so evil that you wish to bankrupt our entire empire? For one fucking satellite? He scowled at her with an irate sense of pride and fury. To his surprise, Markov smiled. <laughs> you think it was just a satellite? Did your people not take any time to look at it before shooting it down? Why the hell would we look at it? Our sensors just picked it up as large space junk, a dead satellite or orbital asset booster. Nothing important. It wasn't until you showed up on our doorstep we were told it was important to you, Terran. It was fucking Voyager 1, you idiot. A priceless artifact for the 20th century. I didn't give two shits a minute ago, but now you've dented my ship, so fuck you. Now get out of my sight. I don't want to see you again till your head is on a pike. I hope you enjoy meeting the SAS, Emperor. His face went pale as she reached down and pressed the large blue button on her console. All vessels begin Voyager's Revenge. <laughs>